breaking! It's a pipe bomb! So, I didn't think that I'd have to make another little disclaimer at the beginning of this video like I did my last video, but I fucking suck. So, here's my little disclaimer for this video. Dunkirk came out a while ago, and I was supposed to review it a while ago. I even said in my last video, Dunkirk is out, and I have to go watch it. Like, right now. Like, probably before I even upload this review. So expect another video real soon. But I got a little bit of time off, and I got to go and see my family, my friends, and everything else like that. And also, I procrastinated a little bit. I even was juggling in my mind whether I should release this video, because I didn't know if it was outdated at this point. And it probably is, but fuck it. I saw Dunkirk. I'm here to talk about it. Dunkirk is the new war action drama directed by Christopher Nolan. It's based on the true story of the allied British, French, and Belgian forces during the Second World War. After being pushed down to the shorelines of Dunkirk, France, by the German army, at least 400,000 soldiers attempt to evacuate the beach and head back to Britain. But that proves easier said than done. Here's just a quick disclaimer. I didn't know too much about Dunkirk and the events that took place there that well until the movie's official announcement, which is well over two years ago now. I looked it up for significance and relevance before viewing the film, and looked it up a little bit more afterwards to help me with this review. So if any of my statements are inaccurate in any sort of way, I apologize. So due to the fact that Britain was nearly 100 miles of ocean away from Dunkirk Beach, and due to the very finite amount of fuel each plane could hold, it was incredibly difficult for the Royal Air Force to send out pilots. And even as they did, most of them would get trapped dogfighting halfway in between. And since these allied forces were surrounded by the German army, it was a tremendous risk for them to send out evacuation ships, since most would either get bombed or torpedoed. So the soldiers trapped on this beach are nothing more than sitting ducks, awaiting some sort of miracle. I went into this movie with very minor expectations. Like I said, I didn't really know too much about Dunkirk before this movie. Um, my only expectation really being that it was going to be good. Why, do you ask? Because of this fucking guy right here. Christopher Nolan, in my opinion, is not only one of the best directors working in Hollywood today, but is probably one of the greatest of all time. Now, I know there are those here that may disagree with me, and hell, he's got some movies that I'm not as fond of. My father's work is done. But for the most part, I have loved almost everything that this man has ever released. And he's one of the reasons why we have some gorgeous looking blockbusters today that aren't just some reboot or some sequel. So thanks to the fact that I don't know much about my British history and that Nolan likes to make original films, the only real expectation I had for this movie is that it was gonna be good. And it was. <laughs> Dunkirk pulls you into the action immediately. It doesn't take its time to establish things or set up the events leading up to it. The movie opens smack dab in the middle of Dunkirk, and before the audience even has a chance to reach for their popcorn, we're already being launched into this movie. And it's it was fucking great. Something significant to note about this film is that it follows a non-linear narrative structure. Its sequences are cut into three main parts, which all span a different length of time in the film. First, there's the mole, or the beach which spans the course of a full week. Then you have the sea, which spans just one day. And finally, you have the air, which spans just one hour. And all three of these sequences are interwoven with each other throughout the entire film. The mole focuses on all the soldiers trapped on shore and shows the mass extremities that these men went through just to survive each day. The sea focuses on the local fishing boats that departed voluntarily to rescue these men. And the air, of course, focusing on the Royal Air Force and all their efforts and the difficulties they faced in the skies. Dogfighting opposing fighter planes while still trying to keep enough fuel to make it all the way to Dunkirk. This specific and very unique narrative was such a refreshing way to experience this film. It kind of reminded me of the first time that I ever watched Pulp Fiction. I wasn't expecting it and I'm so happy that he chose to do this instead of a normal linear structure. It made every scene feel that much more intense and disorienting. Everything is happening and you have to stay attentive and on your feet. Kind of like the soldiers in the movie. Now let's talk about the characters in this movie. There wasn't any really. No character development. There wasn't much of really anything to learn about any of the people in this movie. Now before you start going, uh, but Adam, you were just talking about how good this movie was. I'm confused. Is this review non-linear? Just hold off for a minute because Nolan's choice of not developing any of these characters 
was a really good one. I know with the last two reviews that I've made, I took about half of the video just to talk about the strength in the characters, what made them all effective, and why character development is crucial. But with Dunkirk and the way that Nolan chose to approach it, shit's different. One of the feelings that makes me feel a little off when watching these history biopics is the fact that these perspectives we've entered as audience members are almost always subjective. This subjectivity works well most of the time so that we have ties to the characters, so we feel emotionally connected to them. That way we cheer when they're victorious and we boo when they fail. And in other war movies like say Hacksaw Ridge, this works fine because the story is meant to be specifically about Desmond Doss as a person. But Dunkirk isn't about people. I mean, well, it is, but it's not about specific people, okay? It's about Dunkirk and all of the events that took place there. It's about all of the soldiers on that beach and all of the men that selflessly risked their lives to save them. When you're watching Titanic for the entire duration of this three hour long movie, you're only focused on two characters, Jack, and Rose. So when it comes to the tragic ending of Titanic, which keep in mind actually happened, you aren't even concerned about all the other 2,000 people dying. You don't know them at all, and it doesn't impact you. No, instead you waste your entire box of Kleenex on this fucking asshole. And to some, this might be okay. But personally for me, I find it borderline disrespectful. And I think Nolan had to agree with me because in this movie, we follow specific people throughout the story, but they aren't so much central characters as they are more guides for us in the grand spectrum of the situation. They guide us around the entirety of this massive disaster. We don't learn things about them. We barely even hear most of them speak in the whole movie, but yet we're grounded. We feel invested in the story as a whole, and that's due to some very effective directing and visual storytelling by Nolan. They do develop a few of the characters, particularly in the uh, fishing boat scenes, and it did throw me out of the film a little bit, but it was very minor and didn't heavily impact my overall experience of the film. All the actors in the movie did an awesome job too, I think. Even with the absence of Michael Caine! Michael Caine's been in like every single Nolan film that I've seen, and he's a phenomenal actor. There's no denying that. But after a while, I start to go, oh look, it's Michael Caine in another Christopher Nolan film. So as much as I love and respect the man, it was nice to see a little change of pay. Wait, wait a second, wait, wait. Oh my fucking God. In movies like this with very little dialogue, there comes times when people often underestimate the actor's performances. And that's really stupid. If you're able to impact your audience just through sheer expression and emotion, then I think that you're doing a pretty outstanding job as an actor. There's some great names attached to this movie too. Kenneth Branagh, Tom Hardy, Gillian Murphy, Mark Rylance, and even Ed Sheeran. Nah, I'm kidding. It's Harry Styles, everyone. Can you imagine if it was Ed Sheeran? God, that'd be so fucking stupid, right? But even Styles held his own in this movie. And I think he did a pretty good job. And of course, this movie looked phenomenal. Nolan is a very authenticious director, so this film contains real warships, real planes, and other practical set design that really adds so much to the overall feel of the movie. The cinematography by Hoyt van Hoytma was outstanding too. He's also the cinematographer behind all of these movies. So yeah. Guy knows his shit. Now time to address something that I nearly don't do enough, even though in my opinion, it is one of the most crucial parts of a movie, and that's the sound design. Holy fuck was the sound design in this movie unbelievable. Every explosion, every bullet that ricochets off a ship, everything sound related in the movie just pulls you in closer to the experience, especially with those dive bombers. Oh my God, guys, the dive bombers. Every time you heard that sound, you knew nothing good could come of it. Overall guys, I thought that Dunkirk was more than just a movie. I thought that it was a film experience. Nolan tried his very best to immerse the audience into this living nightmare of an event, and I think he did an amazing job. It's realistic, fast paced, and makes you feel uneasy throughout the movie. The actors did a great job telling us the story without saying much at all, and the lack of character development actually adds more to the experience in my opinion. The visuals were brilliant, the sound design, Honestly, I'll be upset if Dunkirk doesn't take home the Oscar for at least sound editing or sound mixing this year. Nolan has delivered us yet another amazing summer blockbuster, and I'm gonna give Dunkirk a 9 out of 10. Check you later!